beyond having great last speaking skills. He used to be a tap dancer. Now, can we ask him to do some tap dancing? Is that too much? He doesn't have the right shoes. All right, well, please welcome Drake down here. Thank you for allowing me to even come and speak. Um, hopefully everybody's still awake, so there's a little bit of energy. Uh, my name is Drake. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, my name is Drake Gibson. I'm a data scientist at the Bureau of Labor Statistics in the Office of Compensation and Working Conditions. Uh, today I'll be talking about our or tax classification via topic model. So quick little roadmap, wouldn't be a presentation without this. Uh, we're gonna talk about the two data sources that we're gonna be comparing and using to classify our task list. Uh, that'll be ONET and ORS. I'll give you their acronyms now. You'll know more about them in a couple of seconds. Uh, the purpose of this project, I'll uh, also talk about leveraging task data, the methods and topic modeling itself. And then finally, I'll show a quick demo of the visualizations. So ONET uh, stands for the Occupational In Information Network. It is, create, it is sponsored by the Department of Labor's Employee and Training Administration, there we go. And also it was uh, done on behalf with, of the North Carolina Chamber of Commerce, I believe. Don't quote me on that, it is on the uh, DOA website, so they will give you more information. Uh, it is marketed as the nation's primary source of occupational information. As a employee of BLS, I would kind of not say that, but again, you know, this is, these views are mine, not VLSs, not DOLs or anybody in the federal government. I just am really proud of the work that VLS does. Uh, it highlights changes in the workforce. It helps people find training and needed for jobs. And also uh, it classifies tasks. Well, right now, ORS does not have ability to classify tasks to be public, to be published and actually used for public consumption. We want to be able to use ONET to help us do that. ONET classifies our tasks using generalized work activities or GWAs, and this actually helps them build out a, a taxonomy for their task data. It's also publicly available. So, so ORS or the Occupational Requirements Survey, it is um, administered on behalf of SSA or is it Social Security, Social Security Administration by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, specifically the Office of Compensation and Working Conditions. Um, our program office did really hard work to get this out, uh, to take in the information, send out a general work uh, file to SSA, and hopefully publish our task data in the future. So this helps support adjudication of SSA's disability program. It shows like the lowest amount of requirements to actually complete an occupation. So it captures cer certain requirements like physical demands, environmental conditions, cognitive and mental demands, and also uh, education, training, and experience requirements. So things like literacy, credentials, and on-the-job training. Uh, we get the task data. It's very, very, very uh, unstructured. Comes in in different ways. Uh, it, sometimes it's a run-on sentence. Sometimes different words, different letters are capitalized. We have misspellings or an incorrect character. Like I think one, when I was running this model originally, we had a degree symbol in there. So that was fun to deal with. So what's the purpose of this project? So the purpose of this project, it's a research project, which is personally my favorite because we get to set the beginning and end of it. <laughs> and this can go on forever if I really wanted to, but unfortunately I have other things I kind of have to get to as well. So what we want to be able to publish ORS task data to the public. We want to be able to give that to people to say, these are the minimum requirements to actually complete an occupation. And these are the tasks that go along with it. But as a part of that, we need to build a taxonomy. So ONET has a taxonomy with the generalized working the generalized work activities or GWAs to actually be able to publish their information and categorize it. Within statistics, within the federal system, we have, we have classification systems. So you have NAICS or the North American Industry Classification System. You have SOC codes or the standard occupational classification. I mean, it's cl classification, I, it's either codes or classification, I can't remember right now and I apologize. But we, as the, basically what I'm trying to say is we classify everything. Everything has to be labeled and then we can then, you, publish out to the public and actually say, this belongs here. So we don't have a way to do that with ORS yet for our task data and we wanna be able to do that. So how are we gonna do that? We're gonna to use topic modeling. So topic modeling, as you can see here, we have two definitions. Um, it's a type of statistical model for discovering the abstract topics that occur in a collection of documents by Susan Lee and a publication about topic modeling and, and uh, LDA allocation. We'll, LDA, and we'll be talking about that a little bit more in 
in the next couple of slides. Uh, Julia Silgi and David Robinson for uh, text mining with R, a tidy approach. It's the method of unsupervised classification of such documents, similar to clustering of numeric data. You can read the rest of that. My personal favorite one I didn't include on the slide is topic modeling is an unsupervised machine learning technique that's capable of scanning a set of documents, detecting word and phrase patterns within them, and automatically clustering word groups and similar expressions that best characterize a set of documents. Basically, we just want to classify things and, and let the machine tell us where it's supposed to go using statistical methods. Um, Tommy Jones had a great speech yesterday about LDA and all of his advances. And actually, I used his package text miner to even get to this point. So really excited to kind of talk about those results later on. Uh, as I said, we uh, used uh, latent Dirichlet allocation. So that's the, one of the more common approaches to topic modeling uh, states that each. So for us, our documents are our tasks. Each task falls into a topic, and then each word within each task falls into a topic as well. So we'll have something that says, like, maybe a statement or a test that data science type a lot. Data scientists type a lot. Of course, A will be removed because it's a stop word. The rest of those words will be organized into different topics. If we had a two-topic model, you would say that maybe one word would be in topic two, the others would be in topic one. We would then say this task falls into topic one. Obviously, using a lot of statistical things behind the scenes, we can talk about that further later. But right now, for our purposes, we want to give a quick, simple example. So for uh, this task classification, um, originally, I just created a four topic model as a proof of concept to myself that I could actually understand what's going on. <laughs> so I was following through the tidy, uh, the um, text mining with R, uh, the tidy approach, um, used their package to create a four topic model for, for um, ORs. Then from there, I used the mallet model because it kind of ran things a little bit easier and it had some built-in uh, functions that I liked. And then from there, because I wanted to build more models in a larger size, I used the text miner package, had more built-in uh, functions that I, that I like to use, and it was able to help me visualize and explain it to people in a better way. Like it just gave me a better understanding of what was going on because initially I had no idea what I was doing. I did not know what topic modeling was. And this was maybe the third time I'd actually done machine learning. So I'm still was developing my skill set and developing my capacity. So the models that we're going to be talking about and what I've been kind of displaying to my team and also to management, um, we built a uh, eight topic, 16, 32, 40, and 64 topic models. I chose those numbers arbitrarily. It wasn't any rhyme or reason behind it. I was just trying to figure out what would be the best way to, to be able to classify the data. I looked at the common words and verbs between both data sources. And uh, we're still working on how we actually have a final suggestion. This is a part of a two-prong project, one using supervised machine learning and one using unsupervised. I can, if you ask me later, I'll give you a little bit of information about the supervised, but I didn't really touch it that much, so I, I can't give you all the ins and outs. Just a little bit kind of talking about what I covered a little bit before, before I own that topic model, this, this is a, these are the results we're going to talk about today. I can't talk about ORs because it's not publicly available yet. It's still confidential, and I, I don't want to get in trouble. I do like my job. <laughs> so uh, again, we, we looked at a lot of things here. I looked at word clouds. I, did, I looked at the difference in long likelihoods. Uh, we went over coherence, uh, even did some prevalence things as well. And then um, finally, I used the R squared built into the text miner model to also look at a way to see how well the, the model fit. So these are results when uh, looking at the ONET topic modeling. Um, as you can see here, you have a coherence measure and then you have the R squared. So I'm gonna go quickly over coherence. Um, coherence is how well words are associated within a topic. You have a coherence measure for each topic within the model. And then from there, that final coherence measure is the average of all those coherence measures for that entire model. So you can see here that the eight topic model has the best coherence out of all the models that are listed here. And the 64 topic model has the um, second highest. For the R squared, uh, you can see that the 64 topic model has the highest R squared. Um, and we could talk about that a little bit more further from what my understanding is, is that as you get more topics within the model, the R squared kind of, the, the model fits a little bit better. But if you can counteract that with how big your document or your corpus is, that it will then counter, try to counter, kind of counteract that. And I can talk to Tommy later if I miss, if I mess that up. <laughs> so, oh, one second. So to go back to that also, um, within this model for the eight topic model, topic five had the highest coherence and then topic 33 had the highest coherence um, within the 64 topic model. So we did this thing, we did this uh, project, did this research project that finally kind of came to an end more recently. Uh, we were able to classify each of the tasks, but what is the optimal, what is the optimal number of topics 
for this exercise. We still haven't really found that yet. I would like to do more testing, take more approaches, keep going until, you know, they tell me that I have to stop, say they're not going to let me do this anymore, take my laptop away. But um, for right now, we've come to a stopping point. I, I, I believe personally, and again, this is not a reflection of anybody else's views. I, I would want to have as many topics as possible to get the best, um, I guess, way to classify all the tasks, but I'm still trying to figure out which would, is the best approach. Uh, one of the members of my group actually did a, did a test and actually kind of went through the data and said that it kind of lined up with our standard occupation class, a classification, our standard occupation classification system which is kind of disheartening, which means that we could just use SOC codes to just say, this is how our tasks are supposed to be organized. And then I just wasted six months of my time, but we're still trying to figure out how to really classify it. Um, I wanna thank my team, which is uh, Nicole Nestorek and David O. David O is another uh, data scientist within uh, BLS within my office and Nicole Nestorek uh, runs our, I think it's our, our research department within uh, that office as well. So she, they're both brilliant people. I would not be able to do anything that I was able to do without them providing data, moving things out the way and explaining certain things and actually them being guinea pigs of, does this make sense? Does this work? Does this dendrogram actually look like it's conveying what I wanted to convey? Things like that. So I'm gonna end the slideshow real quick and do this demo. Okay, so this is using the LDA viz package. So the LDA viz package, it allows you to put your topic model into the uh, into their functions and into the, their package, and then it creates a, a web page for you. So technically when you run this package and when you run the functions within the package and you like turn it off, the web page goes away. So I had to manipulate some of the back end to keep it and keep it running. Um, and I could talk a little bit about that as well um, if you have any time after this. So on the left-hand side, you'll see that it has the, well, okay. Yes, you all is left. It shows the intertopic uh, distance map. So it's a bubble map on uh, principal components. Uh, we don't, I'm not gonna go too deep into that because that's still something I'm trying to wrap my head fully around, but it shows that the share of, of the actual corpus within that topic. So topic one has the largest at 16.2% and you can kind of, when you highlight them, it goes through. So it, the map is supposed to show how closely related the topics are or lack thereof. So you see that topic one and topic three are not closely related, but topic two and four are basically on top of each other and may contain some of the similar, some similar things. On the right-hand side, you'll see here that it has the most salient terms, which are the terms that occur, them that have a pretty large uh, frequency within the, the model itself. The equation for it is at the bottom here. They have a working paper explaining that for me, I'm more focused on the relevant terms. So you can click the, the, the bubble there. It shows the most relevant terms that also how, how many times they appear within the model itself. So you'll see that it's system. System appears pretty frequently within this model, especially in topic six, develop within two and four and one as well. But I'm um, changing this Lambda here. They say that the uh, optimal level for the Lambda is like 0.25 but I just wanna go all the way to zero to show these are the terms that are most unique to, to topic one and don't really appear anywhere else within the model. So you'll see something like uh, insurance compliance, uh, green impact, things like that. And then we wanna look at two and four because they look pretty closely related. Uh, so you'll see here the most salient term, well, the four had most salient terms, but these are the terms that are kind of unique to topic two here. Uh, and then if we go back up here, these are the ones, regardless of their frequency in the rest of the model, are pretty relevant for this topic. And then with topic four, you see here is more of a medical focus. So I'm still trying to figure out why those two are so closely related, but that's what the model is telling me at this point. Um, we can quickly go through some of the other uh, models. So this one is a the, this one was an A topic model. This one's a 16 topic model. So as you go through here, you see that more topics are closely related. Still, topic one is kind of further away from everything but you still see a little bit more overlap than I would really be comfortable with, to, to be totally honest. Um, see the same within our 32 topic model, a little bit even more within our 48, and then finally within our 64, you see there's a lot of clustering over here on the right-hand side. Um, you still have topic one and topic three being pretty, further, pretty far apart from each other. And um, we see that the shares also has is, is gone down a little bit as well. But um, here's my contact information for my email. Um, 
And yeah, that was my presentation. Thank you.